Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. By now, I'm sure that most of you are aware of the Being James Bond documentary on Apple TV. I really enjoyed the documentary, but I must say it was a fairly loose adaptation of the book by Joe Darlington, though I thought the actor that they got to portray the author was really good. For those of you who might not be aware, Being James Bond, the Daniel Craig story is a 45-minute documentary kind of chronicling Daniel Craig's time as 007 from his initial, like, discovery by the producers right up until his final day of shooting on No Time to Die. The format really caught me off guard. I was going into it expecting it to be a lot of, like, talking heads kind of stuff, but it isn't. It's really just a conversation between Daniel Craig and producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson that plays out while we see clips from the films, behind the scenes stuff. Uh, there are some snippets here and there of journalists and comments and, and the like, but it is mainly just a, it feels like an almost fly on the wall conversation between those three. It very much has a narrative to it as well. It goes through the chronology, um, touching on the well, high and low points, really. I guess we'll get into it, but I was surprised at how much of a emotional journey this this thing had. I guess going into it, I was just expecting it to be maybe a little bit more fluffy, like I know that we have this because it is obviously a promotional tool leading up to No Time to Die, so I was expecting a lot of, um, you know, Judy Dench to pop up talking and uh, various directors and stuff, just kind of talking about how wonderful Daniel Craig is to work with and all that kind of stuff, but it really isn't that. And that's great. As I say, it really does take the viewer on something of a journey um, throughout the chronology of Craig's tenure. And I think a lot of the stuff, particularly at the start, was super interesting. Barbara Broccoli is talking about the films that she saw where she was like, yes, he is the guy. He's a movie star waiting to happen. It has that sense of being kind of like a rags to riches story. And, and maybe not, maybe that's not entirely fair because Craig himself talks about how he was kind of happy in his career pre-Bond, very happy in indeed uh, doing sort of more artier roles, more dramatic stuff, and then some supporting stuff in Hollywood Fair, Tomb Raider and whatnot. Something that really comes through this whole thing is how much Barbara Broccoli like just friggin' adores the guy. And I know that they're always gonna hype up whoever the incumbent Bond is, whoever the Bond is in the film that they're promoting, but really, and this go kind of goes beyond this documentary and I think into various other things that I've seen of Barbara Broccoli talking about Bond and Craig throughout the years, she really does. Like, she she very much says in this documentary that she has a hard time uh, imagining what the series is going to look like when Daniel Craig isn't there anymore. And that's going to come up very soon, apparently. One of the really interesting snippets that we get early on is they show a bit of Daniel Craig's screen test. And I don't believe that video of that has ever been released. Uh, the, the, it, it's Craig on a set and you see Martin Campbell directing him. Obviously, Martin Campbell, the director of Casino Royale. And there's an actress there. Not Eva Green. I'm not sure who the actress is. But they do the whole I'm the money uh, scene from Casino Royale. We only see snippets of it though and most of it plays out as uh, the uh, Craig and the producers are having their conversation. I'll admit to being slightly disappointed that we didn't get more of that. Um, like I've seen stills of like shirtless Daniel Craig like coming in when they uh, one of the scenes that they traditionally do in Bond screen tests is the From Russia With Love scene where Bond sees Tanya in the bed and I, I think that there is a still existing out there of that scene. That isn't in this. And I guess I understand that maybe they do want to keep some things under wraps, but in terms of like juicy new uh, stuff to see for us Bond fans, the, seeing the screen test was quite a highlight. And then of course they go into the whole uh, backlash against Daniel Craig that he received when he became Bond. And I was really surprised, like Daniel Craig actually says that he spent a whole night online reading all of the negative feedback and, and all that kind of stuff. And I just thought, wow, that's so, he's so frank and honest and open about like, you, you really, it really does go quite deep in a lot of ways, this documentary. Uh, it's not like the usual fluff of like, he doesn't just dismiss the thing or the, oh, I never bothered to read all of that and, and whatever. He really talks about how it did affect him. And Barbara Broccoli talks about how it affected them on the set and everything. And it's really interesting. And then I love that the turning point is that uh, they talk about there was this paparazzi photograph taken when Daniel Craig is coming out of the water in Casino Royale and apparently it was like that still that suddenly all of the <laughs> press turned really positive. Like all it takes is one really hunky photo and that's it. I hate this guy. Jesus, he's f***ing hot. 
And then there's an awful lot of gushing about Casino Royale. They really big that film up as the genius piece of work that it is, and it really is. I rewatched it actually just a couple of days ago in uh, rewatching all the Craig films leading up to No Time to Die. And every time I watch that film, it gets better and better and better, and they're praising it and. Um, it was a great sort of up yours to the critics that Craig got, so it's a big kind of celebration moment. So as I say about this documentary, kind of, it does that when it like touches on the high points of Craig's tenure and the low points, and when they start talking about Quantum of Solace, the tone of the conversation does change quite a bit, and you do get the sense that they are perhaps being a bit polite about some of the things. Uh, I mean, they talk a little bit about the writer's strike. I really liked this documentary in the sense that it didn't... It was very focused on Craig. It didn't really go into many other aspects of the production unless it did have some effect on his role and uh, his his contribution to the film. And obviously, the writers strike the fact that they were you know they didn't have a finished script that obviously did affect Craig. And he talks about how he was contributing to the script with the director Mark Forster, and he very much says, "Look, I'm not a writer." <laughs> it's, so it was mainly Mark Forster doing an awful lot of the uh, heavy work on that. And they do ultimately come out of it saying, that, oh no, it is it's a good film, but it's no Casino Royale, and fair enough. But it's just very interesting, as I say, from a, a point of, uh, you know, the candid nature of the thing. The fact that they are maybe, you know, touching on, oh yeah, maybe that film wasn't quite as good. You, you're just kind of used to it being a lot of, it's all brilliant, it's all wonderful, but uh, really the tone of the conversation is quite frank and honest, even when one of the films might not be as successful as some of the others. But then that low point quickly becomes another high point as they talk about Skyfall and the explosion of the Olympics, the 50th anniversary, all that kind of stuff, and again, they're just super, super positive about that. There's some really great behind-the-scenes stuff, which I think is actually in some of the Skyfall behind-the-scenes, where you see Sam Mendes directing uh, Judy Dench's final uh, moment in in the film um, when the character dies and it's Barbara Broccoli is so sweet because they're doing this photo with Judy Dench and she's just crying it's uh, it's a really sweet and emotional moment and then again the tone of the conversation uh, sort of changes again as they go into Spectre which uh, a recurring thing when they talk about Quantum of Solace and Spectre uh, they often talk about the, the the comments about it are often kind of almost shielded I, I guess by talk of uh, how Craig had a really tough time physically. He talks on Quantum of Solace how he threw himself into the role. He was doing an awful lot of the stunt work and stuff. Uh, and, and maybe that was as some kind of overcompensation for the fact that they knew that the script wasn't quite working. Um, and on Spectre, they don't cover it in as much detail as the other three films, um, I don't think. But they talk about how Craig had his leg injury, and I didn't realize that it was quite as bad as, as that. It really... Um, but yeah, it sounds like the shoot for that was just a real, lit literally, a pain for him. So when it came to, they even talk about the promotional material when, I remember when Spectre was coming out and he was acting a bit grumpy on some of the talk shows and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it really does delve into that. And he talks about, yeah, I wasn't really in the, the best of moods. And when everyone is asking him the same question of, will you do it again? Will you do it again? Will you do another one? It's easy to see from his point of view why he might not have been his most cheery and perky during that whole thing. And then obviously they cap it off by uh, talking a bit about No Time to Die. They don't reveal too much uh, in terms of plot. There are some new clips in there, or at least clips in there that I hadn't seen before, which were really cool. And they show some behind the scenes stuff of his very last day on set and his emotional speech to the cast and crew, which is really great. There were so many people assembled on the set, and Barbara Broccoli, again, she's so sweet, just coming in, like, crying and hugging him, and it's really uh, nice. And then that's kind of how the thing ends. They talk about how No Time to Die is this perfect sort of wrap-up for his uh, tenure. And I guess, <laughs> for the first time watching this, I really, it really did strike me, like, this really is the guy's last one. And I know that they've been talking about this for a while, I know they've been talking about this as the culmination of his tenure, but I suppose there was always this thing in the back of my mind saying like, oh well, if it all goes down really well and they get a good script, they could maybe get him back for another one. But uh, no, th this feels like a full stop uh, on his tenure. And I think a part of the reason why I love this documentary so much, this retrospective, is because it was really... Uh, 
Well, it was a cool retrospective on the actor's tenure, and no other Bond has really been afforded that. The closest I can think of, and it's a very different thing, but the George Lazenby uh, becoming James Bond documentary was similar in a lot of ways, kind of, it had uh, more dramatized uh, moments in it, like docudrama kind of stuff. But it did kind of chronicle his journey to becoming Bond and, and, and all that. Uh, I think it's a shame that we don't really have that level of... Obviously, there are career retrospectives on Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Piers Brosnan, but not so focused on Bond. I think the Everything or Nothing documentary served as like a little capsule for each actor uh, who took part in that documentary, but that documentary had 50 years, 50 years plus actually, because it covered some of uh, Ian Fleming's life as well, so they had an awful lot to fit into that, and they couldn't go into the level of depth that they did with this and Daniel Craig. There are just so many lovely little moments and anecdotes throughout the whole thing. I really liked when Craig was talking about uh, he was doing this play with Hugh Jackman, and he was saying, like, he learned some stuff from him, obviously Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, um, and he kind of talks about their kind of different reactions to fans, and Hugh Jackman's just like, having photos with everyone and autographs and all this kind of stuff, whereas Daniel Craig is maybe a bit more, you know, private, a bit more guarded, doesn't really do that kind of stuff, but uh, I thought that was quite amusing. I know that this exists as a promotional piece, uh, but it, it really is more than that. This is not some fluffy featurette. Uh, this stands on its own. I hope that this thing is included in the No Time to Die um, home media sets, uh, Blu-ray, 4K, DVD, all that, because I know it's only on Apple TV for a limited time at the moment, but I hope that it has some kind of permanent home somewhere on some future release or box set, because it is really good, and I'm gonna want to revisit this. Particularly after No Time to Die as well, when maybe some of the comments that they make about his finale in relation to that film, you, you, we've got more context for those comments, because obviously they're not revealing anything about the, overtly revealing anything about the story or the character um, anyway, so it'll be interesting to come back to it after that. But yeah, like I said, it just really put Craig's whole tenure into such a perspective. Like, I was thinking about how that relates to me and my fandom, because it's, I'm 31 now, I was like, what, 16, 17, when Casino Royale came out in 2006, and, to think that Daniel Craig has been Bond for almost half my life is crazy. And I'm sure there are Bond fans now who weren't even born when Casino Royale, like, I still refer, I still think of Casino Royale as one of the new movies. I still think of Daniel Craig as the new Bond. And it's like, oh wow, no, he really has defined uh, an era for the series in a way that we haven't had since Roger. Like I say, I hope it finds a home on some kind of uh, media set in the future, but, uh, yeah, it made me kind of emotional, quite hyped at the same time. It was this weird mix of like, oh, nostalgia, but also looking forward to the thing that's coming in the future. It's a real, uh, a real roller coaster actually. Like I say, it does cover all of those high and low points really well. Um, yeah, highly recommended. As always, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, and also you can click the subscribe button to stay up to date on future video uploads. There's also the Mrs. Bell button down there if you, re you want to get the notifications whenever I uh, upload a video. Um, also below are links to my social media pages, including my Twitter page, my Facebook page, and my Patreon page for those of you who want to go one extra step in supporting this channel. And uh, with all that being said, and until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.